All right, so I'm gonna be showing how to open up and disassemble this MacBook Pro 13 inch model A1502. This is a early 2015 model. Um, those details are very important. If the year model doesn't match properly, yours will be different. So don't assume it's the same. Make sure to check the year model of your MacBook. Um, you can check that by Googling um, MacBook serial number lookup. And I believe the website is called any Mac or every Mac or something. Um, and then you enter your serial number in there and you can look up which exact year yours is, okay? So this MacBook seems to have had a spill inside as well. Um, it does power up at least, so hopefully the only issues are the screen and the battery. Um, but yeah, we're gonna replace those now. So um, I forgot to mention, but on the bottom, you need to remove the screws. These are pentalobe. Um, they're a star-shaped screw. Um, don't try and use a random other screwdriver because you can damage the screws. So make sure you get a pentalobe screwdriver. Um, I believe it's a 1.2. Um, so that's what you'll need. Yeah, it's a 1.2. All right. So just remove all the screws from the bottom. The two in the back near the hinge are shorter. So keep the keep that in mind. Keep the screws in order. But you have to remove the 10 screws on the bottom, right? Four on the top, two on the sides, and then four more on the bottom. Right, then you just basically pull up the cover from the back like I showed earlier. Okay, um, first thing you want to do is disconnect the battery here. So let me see if I can show you that. I had it disconnected already. But, um, so the battery connector is underneath this plastic piece. Okay, as you can see, there's this, um, lip, this plastic lip that sticks up. I use my fingernails and I just pull on it like this. So you can see as you pull on it, all right, it just pops out just like that. Okay, once you do that, you want to hold the power button for about 15 seconds just to drain any power that's in the computer. Make sure you don't damage any components. This is very important when replacing the screen or disconnecting the screen connectors. Hold the power button down. All right, I did clean up some of the liquid residue, but it's like dried on, so I don't want to kind of mess with it too much and then risk damaging something else. So I just scrubbed it with a soft toothbrush. All right. Okay, so this rubber piece and also these little rubber things um, are missing. Usually these rubber things, I think because Apple, the design's not very good, um, these metal pieces are spring-loaded. And in some cases I've seen where people drop the MacBook, the sudden shock causes the solder that holds these down to pop out. Um, so that's why they added these little rubber pieces. So I think Apple's constantly finding issues with their computers and then adding things to try and kind of combat that. But anyways, um, so we're going to do the screen first, um, just because that's the easier repair. And I kind of want to make sure that the screen is working before I pull out the whole battery and find out that the computer doesn't work properly. Okay, so to change the screen out, um, you'll need a T5 screwdriver as well as a, I believe it's a T8. Um, and then I think, yeah, that's it. So T5 and T8 other than the pentalobe screwdriver. Okay, so first what you wanna do um, is disconnect all the connectors. So let me see if I can show you a close up of that. So first you'll want to disconnect the wireless antennas. Okay, so just like this, I use my two fingernails and pull up on the tail. And then when you do that, it'll just pop out. All right, so you don't wanna try and pry from the front of the connectors cause you can damage them that way. All right, once you do that, you'll want to disconnect this um, cable here. This is the webcam connector. Let me see if I can show you the whole thing. But um, move this rubber piece out of the way. Um, I use my fingernail, you can use a pry tool and kind of just lift this cable up. It is held down with a strong adhesive. Um, these cables, since you're replacing the screen with another one, um, it's not too important to keep them intact, but to safely remove them, this is how you do it. Just slowly peel it up. Okay, go all the way down. Once you peel that up, um, then you can kind of guide it around and get that out of the way. All right, so the connector here, to disconnect it, you grab as close to the connector as you can, and then you just hold this wire and you kind of just wiggle it. Wiggle it gently, don't be too, don't pull too hard on it or you can damage it. Um, this connector looks like it has some corrosion on it. So I have a feeling their camera is probably not gonna work. Um, I don't know if replacing it is gonna help or not. Um, 
because it's corroded on the inside so that means it probably damaged the internal connector in here. Um, I will clean it up a little bit and hope that it helps but it looks like it's most likely dead. Okay, so the camera is most likely not going to work on this, but we'll find out. Anyways, um, after that, you want to disconnect also the LCD connector here. So to remove that, again, I use my fingernail. There's this uh, metal latch. You just pop it up just like this. Um, you can use pry tools, but use plastic ones. Don't use metal because you can damage these things easily. Um, I prefer my fingernails because I can feel how much force is being used. It's easier to make sure I don't break anything. All right, then you pinch these, all right, and then just pull the connector back. You can kind of wiggle it if it's stuck, but it'll come up like this. It will get in, this thing will get in the way, so just keep that in mind. Just kind of pull it back and then lift this up, all right, and then you can kind of move that out of the way. Okay, once you got all of that disconnected, um, you'll want to remove the little rubber caps on both sides, okay? So there's two rubber caps on both sides. So to remove the one on this side, um, I just take the T5 screwdriver and go from this side, all right? Stick the tool underneath the rubber piece and then kind of push it between the two screws and lift it up. That way you get to keep the um, adhesive there underneath and then that way it kind of sticks back a little bit when you put it back down. Okay, same thing with the other side, all right? I forgot which side the adhesive's on, let me check, okay. Okay, so it is on these two sides, so you wanna start from the outside again. All right, same thing, stick the tool in, push it between the two screwdrivers, and then lift it up while you kind of push down on the rubber piece, okay? Then you'll get to keep the adhesive on this again, just like the other one. All right, and then there's these little metal brackets here that you need to use the T5 screwdriver for. So just undo that screw there. Sorry, I know my hand's gonna be in the way, but just remove that screw, okay? After you remove that screw, I like to keep the screw with the bracket. Sorry, it's kind of going off screen. And then I kind of pull up on the, the metal bracket from this wing here that sticks out behind the metal piece of the bracket. So it goes like this and this piece goes behind there, okay? So I pulled that part out, and then I keep that. Don't mix them up, they are different. Um, so the left and the right are different. So make sure to keep it in order. Same thing with this one, remove that one screw, and then lift it out by the wing, okay? Same thing, take out the screw, grab the wing, and take it out, okay? So now we took that out. After you do that, what you wanna do is open the screen all the way, Okay, let's see if I can show this. So you open the screen all the way, not just 90 degrees, open it all the way, and then you lay this over um, over the back of your table or off the edge of your table, okay, just like that. All right, then you want to take your T8 screwdriver and then undo the screws. Keep the screws in order even though all six of these are the same. It's always a good idea to put them back in the same spots. And then also for these, if you can, use thread locker to put on the screws when you put them back to make sure that they don't come back out, okay? So Apple, they use like a blue thread locker, but I like to use the red thread locker to make sure it's more secure. All right, so we'll remove the six screws here. Let me see if I do a show close up, more close up. Uh, then you can't really see. But anyways, you know what I mean? Take the six screws out. All right. Uh-oh, my phone's overheating. I'm gonna have to do it. All right, sorry about the cut. My phone overheated again. So it's because I'm kind of uh, casting, chrome casting it to my, to another screen so I can see what I'm recording. And then, yeah, it's making it do too much. It's also uploading another video right now. But anyways, um, as I was saying, make sure to remove all the six screws, okay? Once you do that, then you can let the screen drop slightly so it's no longer, uh, let's see if I can show, so it's no longer like 100% that way, and then you can kind of lift it up. Okay, then take the screen out. Okay, grab the replacement screen. Let's see here. Right. Remove all the protective stuff. You can leave this the top screen glass protector on, but
but you want to remove all the other protective stuff. Okay. All right, lift that out of the way. Seal it up. All right. If yours came in a little ziploc -y bag, just make sure to undo all of those. Okay. Tape off of this stuff. Packing in a way that makes it kind of difficult to open. Okay, so undo that. Once you get that out, just pull all the connectors out. Okay, yours is probably not going to be packed the same way, but uh, yeah. All right, set all that stuff aside. You can take off the um, back thing. This is basically there just to hide the logo. I think. Uh, it's so it doesn't get confiscated or something. But um, anyways, once you do that, um, the hinges will be down. So you will have to use your screwdriver and then just pry it up. Don't put the screwdriver all the way through because you don't want to hit the screen with your screwdriver. All right, and do that with both. Okay, so now that you got the hinges out, you just want to, again, use the edge of your desk. It'll help like this okay then you just slot it back in all right once you do that um, you want to put in the two closest um, screws to the hinge to the center of the laptop so that will hold up the screen all right you don't need to tighten it too tight just kind of loosely fit it there um, and this is so that you can close the screen so once you got that, then close the screen, but do it slowly because you don't want to scrape. Um, you'll feel if it scrapes if it's not aligned properly, okay? So the reason you want those two screws in um, first and not just tighten all of them is so once you do that, you can loosen them again. And then take the corner edges like this, okay? I use my fingers like this, and then I kind of pinch the corners to make sure that it lines up. Let's see, my alarm is on. There we go. Turn that off. All right. So just make sure the four corners are lined up properly. After you do that, you can tighten these two screws down. Okay. So these we're going to take out again later to apply the thread locker on it, but I'm tightening it just so it doesn't move around. Okay. Then we can reconnect the, the cables. So when you reconnect the cables, make sure that the pins are on the top. So let me show you here. So when you reconnect this cable, as you can see, the gold pins are on the top of this connector. So make sure you don't try and plug it in upside down. Okay, and then make sure the cable goes around this metal piece like it was before. Okay, just grab the metal bar, line it up. All right, make sure it goes flat. If there's dirt in there, you might have to brush it away. Let me clean this to make sure. Okay. All right, so we'll put the connector in. Make sure that the outer wings go underneath the connector. Okay, and then push it in. Okay, once you make sure it's in properly, all right, then you can put down the little metal wing, and then you just make sure that cable goes behind, okay? And same thing with these. You can do these after you do the screw. Um, so let me do the screws properly first. Okay, so now we're gonna have to add some thread locker. I mean, this isn't necessary, but it's good so that the hinges don't ever come back out and then sometimes they come loose and cause problems. Okay, so just get the screw, put a little of this stuff on the edge of this, on the side of the screw, just like that. And then tighten it in. All right, make sure the screw is tight. Grab the other screw. Same thing, add the stuff. And tighten the screw in. Okay, get the other screw back out since we didn't add the thread locker to it. Add the thread locker. 
and tighten up the screw. All right. So for the other side, you kind of want to put the um, wireless antennas in first. Okay. So you want this metal part with the antennas going out that way. Okay. So you'll want to put in both these screws lightly first just to make sure that it holds it in and it's not like misaligned okay once you've got that you can tighten them down to make sure that it's not wiggling around all right and then take one of the screws out add the thread locker just like that tighten it all the way Oh, one thing I forgot to mention, um, you might want to guide the um, webcam cable underneath so you can actually lift the two screws up slightly. Normally this metal piece is bent a little bit so it's easier to get this um, cable underneath, but uh, basically thread the camera cable underneath here. Oops, I took that other screw all the way out. Okay, so I just get the camera cable underneath. Uh, let me put this one back in. Take this one out all the way. Alright, I'm going to reapply the thread locker on that. Okay, so get this cable underneath. There we go, like that. Alright. Okay, now we can get the thread locker, reapply it. down. That'll keep the cable from moving around. All right, add the thread locker to that screw. Tighten it down. Make sure these screws are tight so they don't get any wiggle room. All right. Just hand tighten it. You don't want to use like special tools to tighten it because then you can end up damaging it if you tighten it way too much. Just make it until it's like kind of hard for you to turn it. All right. Now that we got all those screws in, we'll switch back to the T5. And then we'll put those little metal pieces back in. All right, so you got that. Close the thread locker stuff. All right, let's zoom in. My phone might overheat again, hopefully not. Okay, so you get this little metal bracket and just put it in there, okay. There we go, just like that. And then put the screw back in. Sorry if my hand's blocking the way. Okay, just like that. Then do the other side, same thing. Put that little metal piece in, All right? Line it up, get the screw, just like that, okay? And then just tighten it up. All right, once you got all of that done, you can redo the cables for the webcam and everything. So the webcam cable, again, make sure that the gold pins for the connector are facing up. Um, I don't know if I can clean this out some. Sometimes it helps to use like rubbing alcohol, but since it's already kind of, um, since it's already liquid damage, I don't want to get it too much everywhere. So I'll just put a little bit, I added a tiny bit to the top of the toothbrush. So if you can see, it's getting a little bit wet there. Okay, and then I'm just cleaning it out so hopefully the corrosion will be removed. And then I use this air thing to quickly dry it up. As you can see, all the liquid residue just disappears. Okay. Alright, keep blowing air into it to make it sure it's dry. Yeah, their old camera connector was like burnt, so I don't know if internally it's burnt too, but we'll find out. Okay, so get the connector, 
make sure that you kind of twist it the way right it came a little bit twisted so again you want the metal connectors facing up the gold pins and then just pull the wings in kind of just keep wiggling side to side just the same way you pulled it out all right and then run the connector if there's an adhesive make sure to peel off the little um, adhesive strip so that you can stick it back down all right then we got the wireless antennas let me see if i can show this close up so the wireless antennas this might be difficult to show close up because i have to kind of look let's see here all right so just grab the antenna line it up over the connector make sure it's the way you know it's lined up i rub my fingernail over it and as you see it's not moving then you know it's lined up and then you kind of just push it straight down just like that all right same thing with the other three antennas are kind of like weird length so makes it a little bit more difficult i think they replace the antenna cables on this screen okay so line it up make sure it's lined up okay be gentle with it you don't want to try and smash it down if it's not aligned properly or you can easily damage these cables Okay, so there we go, and then we'll plug in the last one. Okay, just like that. All right, so we got all the antenna cables connected. All right, the wireless or the eyesight camera cable is also connected. It's kind of coming up, the cable's a little bit longer than the original one. Make sure this rubber piece goes under. Whoever did this, they kind of like smashed it so it's kind of folded weird. Okay, there we go. So now we're gonna test the um, screen. So now that we got everything plugged back in, okay, now we'll um, push the uh, battery connector back in. Put the cover on top. Right, there we go. The battery on this is a little inflated, so it's kind of weird. All right, open up the screen. Push the power button. I like to hold the option key so it doesn't go to my customer's um, boot screen. But let's see, hopefully everything is good. Their battery might be too dead, so I might have to plug it in. Nothing is coming up, so let me plug this in. Okay, so I also like to do a PRAM and SMC reset when I first uh, reconnect everything. So to do that, I don't know if you can see the light's orange right now, but I hold Control, Option, Shift. Oh, yeah, the battery's dead. It's showing low battery. Um, but anyways, I like to do this, reset the PRAM and SMC. So to reset the SMC, do Control, Option, Shift on the left side, and then you press the power button. You should see the light go green, and then it'll go back orange. And then to do a PRAM reset, um, let me use their charger. Okay. Sometimes my charger doesn't let the computer boot up until it actually gets enough charge. So let's try with theirs and see if it works. So to do the PRAM set reset, you do Alt uh, or the option key command and then PNR while the computer's starting up. So turn it on and then press and hold those buttons. The screen will flash or sometimes it doesn't flash, but it'll go, it won't show the Apple logo. And then you let go and it should boot again a second time. There you go. So that's how you know it's actually going. I'm going to hold the option key. Hopefully it'll go to the boot options. Let's see here. The screen's just okay there we go so you see the apple logo all right so i'm going to peel off this plastic because it keeps scraping on the thing and making annoying sound all right so i didn't hold the option key quick enough so it's booting i think into recovery mode because i pressed it after it already started um, but as you can see the screen is working 
see, I'll peel that off too. So the screen is good. All right. So now we're going to go and replace the battery. Um, their charger looks kind of torn, so might need to they might need to replace that as well. All right, so I'm going to let it boot. Maybe I'll pause because you don't really need to see this part, so I'll be back in a bit. Sorry about that. Uh, apparently my phone overheated again. Let's see if this helps. Uh, I took the phone case off, so we'll see what happens. Anyways, um, again, we took the screen out and replaced it. Everything looks like it's good. So now I'm going to put these little rubber pieces back on. Okay, so let's see. Just reattach them, just like that. Sorry, my phone's kind of aligned weird now, I think, because the case isn't on it. Um, there we go. Let me zoom in a little bit. There we go. Okay, so put back these little rubber pieces. Um, the one you want is the part that extends out. You want it closer towards the center. They are different on both sides, so keep that in mind. Okay. So now we're going to replace the battery, okay? So to replace the battery, what you want to do is remove this um, little metal bracket here. Let's see if I can do a close-up. But basically, you use a T5 screwdriver for this, okay? So remove the two screws holding those in place, okay? Oh, and you'll probably also want to disconnect the battery again, of course. So just disconnect that as I did earlier. Press and hold the power button again just to drain it, right? Hold it for about 15 seconds just to be safe. Okay. All right, once you've done that, okay, and then you remove the two screws for this metal bracket, just take the metal bracket off. And you'll want to remove this, um, sorry, you'll want to remove the trackpad cable here. So to remove the trackpad cable, this connector is pretty much like the battery connector. You just go underneath the connector and pop it up. All right, do that on both sides. Okay, it'll pop up like that. There's an adhesive on here. So you kind of want to peel it up. Don't just pull straight up. You kind of want to pull it in a way so that it keeps the cable flat as possible, okay? You don't want to kind of fold or crease the cable because you can damage it that way, All right? I like to press down here so I don't accidentally yank the cable out. And then after that, you peel up this um, and then flip this little latch here. Let me see if I can show it. Okay, so you want to flip this little latch here up just like this. All right, once you got that latch flipped up, then you can pull this cable out. There is an adhesive underneath it, so it will be a little bit difficult to pull out, but kind of just pull and wiggle. All right. All right, and do it slowly. You don't want to just yank it out because then you can damage the cable. Uh, even this cable has some corrosion on it. Hopefully everything will work okay. I'll try and clean it up a little bit. All right. Set that cable aside. And then what we have to do to make it easier, we also want to remove the screws for the speakers here. Okay, so there's three screws on each. Also using the T5 screwdriver. Okay, so remove those. Sorry, I keep making the camera shake. All right. If anyone has like a recommendation for some kind of remote or something so I can zoom in and zoom out and stuff, um, just let me know. Maybe I'll look for something like that. It might make recording better so I don't have to keep um, physically using the zoom on the camera itself or my phone. Okay, so remove the three screws here holding the speaker. Then you can move the speaker out of the way. You just lift it up. The, normally it's not stuck like this, but there must be liquid underneath holding it. So usually you can just lift this speaker out oh man it's stuck okay let's see here so i'm gonna have to be careful because the cable's connected there okay there we go it's coming out there we go so you just lift the speaker out the foam got stuck to the bottom of the case because of the liquid residue um, and then you want to remove this speaker as well three screws Usually I just leave this one plugged in, but if you want, you can take this connector out and then unplug the speaker um, if it gets in your way. Um, if you're doing it for the first time, you'll probably want to do that just to be safe um, so that you don't accidentally damage anything. Okay, so 
take out the speakers. I'll show you how to take out this one. It's basically the same thing. But this speaker, okay, you lift it up, you move the wire out of the way. To disconnect this cable, let me do a zoom in on that. Okay, so to remove the speaker cable here, um, what you do is I get my fingernail underneath. Um, there is slight, a slight adhesive as well. And I get my fingernail as close to the connector as possible. And then I kind of just twist it and pry it up just like that. And then the other side, you kind of just wiggle it out. Okay, so that's how you remove the speaker connector. All right, so now we got the speaker out. Oops. Okay, so now what we have to do is pry out the battery. So this is the part that's kind of the most difficult. Sometimes if it's inflated a lot, this battery's kind of inflated, so it's going bad, but it's only inflated on this side. But sometimes it makes removing it easier because the inflated battery um, causes the adhesive to release itself already. But basically you get a long, thin tool like this, and then you kind of just pry underneath, okay? Hold from the other side and then just pry under the battery. And you just scrape under it, okay? And that will um, cut the adhesive. The, adhes <laughs> the adhesive is like a foam, like there's a foam layer. Um, so when you do this, you're cutting the foam part away, okay? All right, so just do that. All right, if you're wondering what this tool is, it's um, it was actually, I think, designed for like scooping pills at a pharmacy or something, but uh, I bought it from someone. They said that they used it for, um, what do you call, for like frosting little cupcakes or something. So yeah, so if you wanted to look for a tool like this, um, it does need to be pretty thin. I did buy another one that was actually designed for like using as frosting and then I just um, filed it down to make it a lot thinner um, so but I, I like this one so I'm using this one the other one I have is it's a thicker piece of metal so it's less flexible so it makes it a little bit more difficult the the bendiness of this tool actually helps with um, scraping because I have to like bend it a little bit to get it to go under the battery from this raised side section Okay, so this, um, you can kind of pull, push the tool all the way in because it there's a raised metal section for the center of the trackpad. So you kind of don't need to worry about that, but basically just slide the tool, cut all the adhesive. You will get like bits of the adhesive stuck to the tool. Um, but then you basically get this piece out like that. Oh, you also need to remove the screw from the side of the battery here. Okay, so make sure you remove that as well. Um, you don't really need to remove that until you're pulling out the battery, but I'll just do it now so I don't forget. Okay, and then you can see this part of the battery lifts up. Okay, so again on this side you basically do the same thing. Just run the tool underneath, cut the adhesive. Okay, this part's kind of difficult to do. I wish Apple didn't make it so difficult. When Apple does this, actually, I don't think they even replace the batteries. They just replace the whole palm rest just because this glue, I don't know. I guess the glue is kind of too much work to remove. And then I think they just send it to China or something for like refurbishing or something. Or maybe they just, I don't know, melt it down. <laughs> I don't know if anyone knows what they do. But um, yeah, so I just do that. Slide the tool under. So now we got both of these sides of the battery packs cut out. Okay, so here you can see it's like that. Um, we will have to peel up all the old adhesive later because otherwise the new battery won't stick in place. Though if you don't want to stick the battery down, technically you can just put the new battery on and just put something on top to kind of keep pressure on the top to push the battery and keep it from shaking all over the place. Okay, so then the tricky part is you lift up this one a little bit and then you slide the tool from oops, you slide the tool from the other side and you have to kind of have it raised slightly because otherwise you'll hit the middle piece. And be careful when scraping because there's the keyboard connector here, so you don't want to push the tool out that way and then end up um, cutting that cable. Okay, so just go like this. I think this model, I'm not sure if this model, if you can lift the little metal 
plate that's holding the battery, but sometimes you can do that. Normally I don't have it laying on my table like this. I'll actually have the thing in my lap and then the it kind of angles up like this. It makes it a little easier so I can keep the laptop against my body so when I pull it it's easier. But um, yeah, so basically this is how I would cut the adhesive and you just slide the tool there. Okay, and then I can see the metal tool is actually going between the two layers here. Okay, so that's how I know I cut through to the next side. Then I can pull the tool back out. Okay, kind of have to wiggle it out. All right, there's ways you can kind of do this without um, cutting it as much, um, like with rubbing alcohol, then it makes that adhesive release, but it's kind of dangerous because if you get the liquid into the trackpad and stuff like that, then it won't work anymore. So I just do it this way, okay? So just keep cutting all the adhesive down like this. All right. And again, you want to be careful with the other side closer to the board or this side too. You don't want to angle it to where you end up cutting into those pieces. Okay, so just like that. See if, I don't know if you can see, but if you turn the, the tool to the side, you can accidentally cut into the trackpad. So just be careful while you're doing this. Okay, so you want to, again, cut this side as well. I like to use this metal bar on the side to kind of keep the tools from going um, at an angle sideways. It kind of keeps it going just straight forward. Okay, just like that. Okay, cut all of this. my phone's not going to overheat again because I don't want to do another take. But, um, yep, so you just keep cutting the adhesive like this. Again, try and make sure to keep the tool going straight. You don't want to go at an angle and then end up cutting um, the trackpad or anything. Okay. And you might want to do this outside or close to a door because I've had some people I ha I've never had the issue but I've seen some people where they puncture the battery and then they can start a fire um, if your battery's already completely dead then you you won't have you shouldn't have an issue with fire even if you puncture it because there's no energy stored inside um, so if you're doing this I guess make sure your battery's dead that will kind of help reduce the risk okay so now that we got all of that out this side still has some adhesive because I didn't cut that way. So you kind of have to be careful. But once you cut everything else, you can kind of go along, okay, and kind of pry that up. Okay. So usually I kind of just cut it and just be very careful. Um, but you do have to be careful because there's this chip for the trackpad here and then um, the other chip for the main board and the keyboard so just be careful this kind of thing you probably would want to bring it to somebody instead of doing it yourself because it is risky but um, if it's too expensive to bring it to somewhere else and you wanted to risk it then yeah all right usually this kind of thing takes a lot of practice I've heard other people say they've used other other methods like um, dental floss or something I don't know how you would do that but yeah but this is how I do it okay so insert the tool I can kind of see where it is and just be careful go slowly all right once you clear that keyboard area then you're probably good to go okay all right there we go so we got that old broken battery out Set that aside. Then we need to peel off all the old adhesive. So on a lot of them, it's pretty easy to get this adhesive out. Um, you just use your fingernail or something to scrape it and then you can peel it up. 
um, on some of them the adhesive is very crumbly hopefully this isn't one of those okay so once you get a corner of it out then you can peel the rest of the adhesive just like this okay so uh, everyone complains about I've, I've gotten lots of complaints about my my nails being long but I use them so if you're one of those people uh, just think about that before making that comment I wouldn't ask someone to cut their fingers off because I thought their fingers were ugly so yeah these these are very useful tools okay so just like this all right so here you can see you can peel this up just like that all right just making all this adhesive all right get out that other adhesive if you want to make it super super clean underneath then you can use like rubbing alcohol um, usually I don't do that just because there's a little bit of risk getting liquid on other stuff and also as long as the battery is sticking uh, for the most part it shouldn't be an issue okay so just peel that up All right. I like to try and get a corner edge if I can and then I can just peel the whole piece but depending how the piece got cut out when we we're trying to remove it since you can't see underneath it might be weird oh I'm getting someone calling me give me a second I'm getting a call hopefully I can pause and restart the video all right sorry about that the customer was dropping off a computer but anyways um, you just peel off all this adhesive okay so just continue peeling all of this off. Oh, this part, it makes the adhesive stick like really weird or really strong, so. Okay, okay, it is peeling off though. Okay, so that's all you gotta do. Peel up all this adhesive, just like that. So I try and avoid using my scraping tools to peel this off because it ends up scratching all the metal. It's not too big of a deal, but usually I don't like making permanent marks on people's computers and stuff, even if it doesn't affect anything. All right, so just like that. Peel up all this. Most of it off. Um, you're probably going to want to just fast forward over this part <laughs> unless you just want to watch how much work it is to remove all this stupid adhesive. But um, yeah. Alright. Anyways, you just want to kind of get up as much of the adhesive as you can. Okay. Just try to remove all this black foamy looking stuff. that 
piece that I need to remove. Assuming it doesn't tear up. Okay. Oh, all right. So now that we got all the adhesive removed, there is still some residue there, but should be okay. All right. Get these little bits of stuff out. All right. Now we'll grab the battery. So the replacement battery, um, depending which model, make sure you get the right one. Um, hopefully you already got the right one because if you didn't, it's kind of already, <laughs> you already opened everything. But um, the models with the touch force trackpad, you'll notice there's a big gap here on the bottom. The older style didn't have this and it had a physical click and they'll have like this part, ex the plastic extended. Um, and when you replace the battery, they'll have this clear plastic stuff on top. This is to keep the battery packs from moving around, so you want to leave this on for now until you install the battery. So first thing you want to do is you'll peel this off. Um, that will let you stick it down. But what I like to do is I test fit it first. So just make sure the battery goes in. Okay, and then see, make sure it's lined up. All right, so it looks like it'll fit. So what we do, we peel this off. Okay, so you can see the adhesive is on there. So make sure that um, it's coming separate. Oops, the blue thing got stuck to the adhesive. So this adhesive they use is very strong. Um, it's so strong, like sometimes the stuff that it's designed to not stick to, it sticks and pulls it away. So make sure to peel off all that blue stuff. See here, you can see it kind of peeled that away. All right, so make sure you get this right because you only get one chance. After that, it's going to be very hard to peel back up. All right, so I have this one speaker here. Um, but basically, if you leave the speaker in, you kind of have to slide this underneath. Okay, and then make sure these two bumps at the bottom get lined up properly. All right, and then you just drop it down. Make sure the screw hole lines up for this connector up here. And then you can drop the whole thing in place. Okay. Just like that. All right. Okay. After you do that, you can peel off this clear stuff. Okay. If you didn't press it down, you might be able to move it around a little bit. Okay. Then we'll get that one screw. Put that back in first. Try and keep it lined up properly. Okay. Just tighten it up. All right, make sure to get the other speaker in. Thread it underneath this metal part that sticks out. Okay, put this thing in and then just pop the connector back down. All right, so now we got all of that. Um, you do want to, don't plug this in yet because you still have to put back in the trackpad cable. Okay, so to put it back in, you basically just slide it back in, of course, and then put the latch back down. Once you put the latch back down, you want to reconnect it. There's dust, make sure to clean it up. Okay. And then just put the connector back in, make sure it lines up properly, and then push it straight down. Okay, let's get the start off the thing. Once you get that all in place, you can push the cable back in place. You can leave it kind of sticking up. When you put the cover on, it will automatically kind of push it down. But um, yeah, all right, then we'll get these screws for this little metal cover, put them back on. All right, get those two screws back in place. These little rubber pieces you can stick back on, but they're probably just going to fall out again anyways. Kind of hold it. Let me clean up some dirt here. All right. So two of them are disappeared, so I'm gonna put them crisscross just to make sure that the corners stay down. Okay, so we got that, and then we'll put back in the screws for the speakers. Hopefully you kept them in order. Um, the longest screw is in the corner, um, the bottom corners, and then you got these um, screws with a, a flat part and then the threads, they go at the top. All right, and then you got the shorter ones that go at the bottom. So hopefully you're keeping the screws in order 
um, and not mixing them all up because you can damage the computer if you switch the screws around. It's very important. All right, just get all the screws back in. All right, usually the batteries, when they ship them, they're not fully charged, so you'll want to charge it up. Um, but now we just have to reconnect the battery connector and then put the cover back on. So let me show you that. So just make sure you get it lined up properly. It might ship like kind of misaligned, so make sure when you do it, you plug in. I like to turn it in a way that I get the top half in first. All right, just like this. Hopefully you can actually see what I'm doing. It's kind of difficult to film this, but get the top half in first. And then after you got that in, you can push the back part down. Okay, so that's how I align the battery connector. There we go. So now that we got this in, if this isn't aligned properly, you can peel this off and then align it properly. Okay, I'm kind of OCD that I like to have it um, lined up properly. So just like that, and then push that down. All right, it is gonna be a little weird, not completely flat, but um, there we go. So we got the battery connector sticker in. If you want it flat, you can kind of leave it and not push that all the way down. So everything, make sure everything's reconnected. Then you put this cover back on. All right, and then you can put back the screws. So go back to your Pentalobe, um, Pentalobe 1.2. All right, usually you can just put in like the two corner screws first to make sure um, so you can test it before you put everything back together. Sometimes the batteries might be defective when you get them, so make sure to make um, that it turns on and everything okay. All right, so I got two of those screws in. Flip it over. All right, open it back up. Um, again, do the PRAM SMC reset. So I'm gonna plug it in first. Make sure the light goes orange. All right, control option shift, power button. It went back green. Then it goes back to orange. Power button, PRAM reset, command option, PNR. Wait till the thing starts up. You hear the sound, keep holding it, the screen will go off, then you can let go, and it should make the sound again. Just wait for it, there you go. I'll hold the option key just to show the boot options to make sure it's working. And there you go, the screen is working. Everything's good to go, I'm gonna clean the dust off, and that's all there is to it. Put all the screws back in and then you're good to go. So hopefully this video helped you. Um, I'm gonna clip all the, merge all the clips together so hopefully it won't be too weird. Um, but yeah, hopefully it helped you. If it did, please like and subscribe so that others can find my videos and, and also be able to fix their devices. Um, then that'll also help me. And thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.